Hey everybody, it's Josh Levine from Josh Levine Speaks. I'm back and I figured while I was standing in front of a piece of art, I would talk about and share some of my thoughts about the world of art as it stands today. I could probably make this four hours long and I will be doing a whole series about some of my experiences in the world of art. But I really wanna to talk to some of you collectors out there, yard sale people, or someone that inherits something that's a, a painting, and just tell you a little bit about how you can do a little bit of your own research in the beginning. First of all, you have to know what you have. You know, when it comes to art, it's funny, I'll get calls all the time, someone will say, I have an original print. Okay, well, that's a print. The original was the original, and it's kind of a, a, a just a weird way to speak. Um, so first of all, you need to know, do you have a print? Do you have an original? Is it a lithograph style of printing? Is it a gicle, where it actually looks like a painting, but it's printed on canvas? Um, what do you know about the piece? Did your parents buy it, you know, from uh, a reputable gallery, or did they find it at an estate sale? What does the estate know about it? So it's a garage sale. Ask questions, find out what it is. Now, many of you could take a loop or a magnifying glass because you are, you've been in this business a little bit and take a look and know if it's actually a painting with brush strokes, etc. And sometimes there's just no question about it. It's a painting. Then you need to get into the artist's name. Okay. I swear the artists do this to us on purpose. A lot of us talk about it. Some will be the most beautiful art painting you've ever seen in your life that you can tell it took them, you know, a couple of months to execute the piece and then they sign it and you're like, I can't make out the name. Um, and sometimes you just have to break down and have an expert look at it. Uh, Google image search technology is getting better and I, I expect within the next two or three years that signatures will be deciphered by AI, AI technology, even if you can't figure it out or that Google image search can't figure it out. So I'm excited about that. A lot of appraisers probably aren't because it might you know, take them out of a job but we're usually pretty good at figuring it out. Once you know who the name is and you can do some comp searches, the best places to look, most of them are pay sites, okay? AskArt, ArtFact, um, ArtNet, these are actual pay sites. But for a free, a great tip for looking up free is live auctioneers and invaluable. You just have to register an account and then you can search their database. You don't have to buy anything, not yet. They haven't made it where you have to, but they're just very powerful search engines and they search historic auction records. That is the most important thing. What does it sell for in the secondary market at auction, reputable auction house, etc.? It does not matter what someone is asking for it online. There are sites like Art Brokerage and eBay where you can ask whatever you would like to ask. And again, you might have somebody, eye of the beholder, come along and buy it for that price, but usually they end up discounting or whatever. And there's some pretty hefty fees to sell on some of those sites. But again, nothing against them. They're fantastic and they do beautiful marketing for you. And uh, sometimes they take up the search engines. Uh, recently, we're running into a lot of issues researching uh, other antiques and collectibles with Pinterest because people are posting and tagging photos, but it doesn't give us the meat and potatoes of the price points we're looking for. So you have to get down. Again, live auctioneers and uh, Invaluable seem to have the best search. There's also Proxy Bid, um, Bid Spotter. There's a couple of other sites out there too that are getting really good for searching their database of like reputable auction houses and secondary markets. So that's a great tip for you. But what I'm going to uh, tell you next is if you run into a famous painter and you found the Holy Grail, you may be careful for what you wish for. Um, it really might send you, when you start to get into six figure art, and that's the thing I'm gonna tell you. Estate sales, yard sales, uh, goodwill, that is where you're, you're gonna get rich quick one day. I'm not saying you are, I'm just saying that is the one lottery ticket in this business. I mean, you can go to an estate sale, buy something for $10 and sell it for $5,000. That's awesome. But the thing that could actually make you rich would be art. And it's like, that's the one thing that we all look for. I always say it's the crack cocaine of this business. And it's, it, it just be careful because when you run into it, there's so many forgeries out there. On top of it, the authentication process 
can just be daunting. I'm actually currently working on a novel right now all about my experiences with a uh, famed Jackson Pollock. And if you ever want to uh, just Google Josh Levine, Jackson Pollock, and you can read pretty much all about the early part of the story, but not what has happened since. And it just keeps going on. So I'm just teasing you with that. My wife thinks I should do a whole uh, documentary series on YouTube about it, but I need to finish the book first. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go start writing right now. I'm actually uh, pretty far into it, and uh, I just got to commit some time right now. So anyway, I will see you probably in a day or two with a new um, mental floss. All right? Take care. It's Josh from Josh Levine Speaks. Hope I uh, helped you or scared you in the world of art.